plans both present serious threats to our national security, to our economic security, and to the future of the Republican Party, as Steve King mentioned. Uh, the first thing is, this, since this is a national security uh, panel, there have been illegal aliens involved in many of the terrorist attacks in the United States and the, uh, the attempted terrorist attacks in the United States. For example, in the 1993 World Trade Center bombing, we had at least two illegal aliens who had overstayed their temporary visas. One, uh, Mohammed Salome, overstayed a tourist visa. Another, Ayad Ismail, overstayed a student visa. In the Brooklyn subway bomb plot, there were at least two, again, uh, illegal alien participants. One, Ghazi Ibrahim, was caught illegally trying to enter from Canada and released pending removal. Does that sound familiar to anyone? <laughs> A criminal alien released pending removal. We also had uh, Lafi Khalil, a tourist visa overstayer. In the 9-11 uh, attacks, we had at least three illegal aliens, all of whom had overstayed their, their uh, temporary visas. Now, why is this important when we're talking about comprehensive immigration reform? Well, there's a perfect example. A man named Mahmoud the Red Abu Halima came to the United States on a tourist visa, overstayed, and in 1986 applied for amnesty as an agricultural worker, despite the fact that he was a, a taxi driver in New York City. He was granted amnesty. He used his newfound green card to travel to Afghanistan for terrorist training so that he could help the, the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center. These kinds of situations are not addressed at all in the Senate Gang of AIDS plan or in the Obama plan. They don't have any means to prevent terrorists from getting amnesty. They don't have any means of tracking people who overstay temporary visas in these plans. Now, if you're a terrorist in the United States illegally and an amnesty is passed, you're going to take whatever documents Al-Qaeda or, or whichever terrorist organization gave you, false documents, and bring them to the U.S. government, who's then going to issue you real, legitimate, U.S. documents in whatever identity you ask them to. Whatever identity you ask them to. Because we have no way of verifying who you are, that you're a terrorist, so we're going to issue you an official brand new identity. So the, the national security implications of the amnesty plan are unbelievably severe and not addressed at all. But just let me point out the economic threat that this amnesty presents. According to a study that will be coming out soon by the Heritage Foundation, the current population of 11 to 12 illegal aliens, we think, costs us a net of $55 billion a year. Our tax dollars, $55 billion a year. If they get amnesty, that they will also get access to additional benefits and entitlements. That cost will rise to $75 billion a year. If they get amnesty, their lifetime costs in Medicaid and Social Security alone will cost two to one net. So those are huge costs that, that we obviously can't afford uh, unless we're going to cut things like, oh, you know, defense spending or, you know, something that we, we can't afford to cut, which is the way the Obama administration has been leaning. Um, but lastly, let me just say, passing an amnesty is not going to get a majority of Hispanics voting for Republicans. By and large, according to all of the polls, Hispanics vote for bigger government, more services, more restrictions on gun ownership, all of the various things that, that are in the liberal agenda. So passing an amnesty is going to essentially give citizenship to somewhere around 11, 12 million new Democratic voters.
Well, we need to have mandatory E-Verify at every workplace so that every worker in the United States is legal. Second, we need to have an entry exit system at all our ports of entry, including land ports, which the Senate gang wants to exclude, so that we can actually track people on temporary visas to ensure that they leave when they say they're going to. Thirdly, if we create an entry exit system, then we can have an effective, enforceable guest worker program for agricultural workers. We do not have a, a low-skill labor shortage in this country, and people like Senator Lindsey Graham, who denigrate the hard jobs that Americans are doing, have no clue what they are talking about. Americans have always done our own dirty work. We should not be importing a peasant class to do it for us. Uh, and that would also raise in our national interest. It is not in our national interest to import poverty as we have been doing through our legal immigration policy. We need to shift the, the skill levels of our immigrants upward. That means we need to focus on nuclear families, spouses and minor children, truly exceptional skilled workers with the skills that we need for our economy, and then our fair share of humanitarian immigrants, refugees, and asylums. Okay, thank you. Uh